This is going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to look at the subject of believing that goes beyond seeing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, starting in verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. It's believing that goes beyond seeing. Some people say, I have to see it to believe it. Some people say, pictures or it didn't happen. Some people don't believe it unless they see a video of it on YouTube. Some people don't believe it unless everyone else believes it. Thomas said that he needed to see the nail print in Jesus' hands before that he would believe. He couldn't believe without seeing. You know the story in John 20, 25 through 29 where Thomas said Thomas said himself that he wouldn't believe until he saw but then Jesus said in John 20:29 20, Jesus said saith unto him Thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed that's you you have to believe all this stuff in the bible and you don't get to physically see it you don't get to see Jesus and put your hands in the nail prints. You have to operate by faith and not by sight. You don't get to see the word confirmed with signs following. Like the Jews did. And like they will in the tribulation. Have you ever stopped and thought about how all these crazy supernatural things happen in the Old Testament. And they're going to happen again in the tribulation as you see in the book of Revelation. But they don't happen today. That's because God is dealing with the Jews during those times. And the Bible says the Jews require a sign. Thomas required a sign. But you operate by faith and not by sight. You have believing that goes beyond seeing. Meaning you don't need to see it to believe it. And so let's talk about believing that goes beyond seeing. All you need is the scripture. Peter said it's a more sure word of prophecy Meaning that the Bible is more sure, the written word is more sure than if an angel came to you right now and told you something. The Bible is more sure. It's a more sure word of prophecy. You can always believe what you see, but you can believe what you read in the scriptures. And the first thing, the first po point I want to make is, you need to believe in a new body, even though you have a busted up body. It's hard to look at this busted up body and feel this busted up body, how it hurts, it feels pain, it's tired, it's sleepy, it's hungry, it's annoyed, it's agitated, everything else. It's hard to believe that you're going to get a new body that doesn't feel any of that stuff. But 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4 tells us about this glorified body that we're going to get. It says in first Corinthians, or Second Corinthians five one, for we, for we know that if our earthly house, that would be your body, of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So this building of God, this house not made with hands, that's eternal, is your glorified body. It's gonna go on forever and ever and ever. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. We, we desire to be in our glorified body, not feeling pain and agony anymore. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. And you know, in 1 Corinthians 15, if you listen to the 1 Corinthians series, that you're, it explains our new body and how this mortality is going to put on immortality. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. Corruption is going to put on incorruption. Mortality is going to put on immortality. You're going to have a glorified body. You're not going to die. If you get in that new body, you won't have to worry about death anymore. And it's hard to believe in that new body when you get up in the morning and look at this busted up body. But that's believing that goes beyond seeing. I haven't seen my new body, 
but I know that it's real because the Bible says so. And next, believe God is in every believer, even though sometimes you don't act like it. Sometimes you don't act like a Christian. Sometimes you don't act like the, the God of the universe could be living in you, but he's living in you. 2 Corinthians 5.5, 5, Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. God's given you the Holy Spirit of God. you got the eternal Spirit of God living inside you. He's given it to you. It's a gift. And it's a mystery how God promises to dwell in our still, sinful, busted up body when we get saved. You can't understand that. And that's why in Colossians 1.27... It calls it a mystery how Christ is in you because you're sinful and he's holy. And, you know, verses like 2 Corinthians 1, 21 through 22 shows that you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 shows that you're sealed into the day of redemption. He's, you've been sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. When you get up and look in the mirror, it takes faith to look at your ugly face and think that God, who made the universe, lives in something so sick and old and wretched and wicked. Because you can't see him. Sometimes you think, am I really saved? How could God save somebody like me? When you mess up in sin and you act like the sinful world, it takes faith to believe that God that made a universe lives in you because you can't see him physically in your heart. An x-ray couldn't even show that he's there, but he's there. You, you have to have believing that goes beyond seeing. You have to go by faith that he is there and the fact that since you've been saved, you have something in you that wants to live right and do right. That's proof. Now you have that war going on inside. There's a war. You want to do right? but the flesh wants to do wrong. Even though you can't physically see Jesus Christ in a person, in a believer, a believer should live so godly that the world can't help but see Jesus Christ in him. Even though it isn't something that is beyond seeing, you should make it where the world can't help but see it. Something needs to be different about you. You need to be a peculiar person. They need to tell that you've been with Jesus, as it says in Acts 4.13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Somebody needs to be able to tell that you've been alone with Jesus and that you're saved and have Jesus living inside you. It's believing that goes beyond seeing when you believe that the God of the universe lives in you. It's believing that goes beyond seeing when you believe that you're going to get a new body when you get up every day and you just see this busted up body. And next, it takes believing that goes beyond seeing when you believe you're going to heaven when you die. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 says, Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. While I'm at home in this body, I'm walking around on this sinful world, in that sense, I'm absent from the Lord. In the sense of the flesh, while we are in this dead corpse of a body we walk around in, we are absent from the Lord. In verse 7, as we've already said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. It takes faith to believe that I, I'm going to go to heaven when I die. It it does. Sometimes it's it's just so hard to imagine. And you can almost imagine hell better, honestly. I mean, hell is forever and ever. Forever, you 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 hear about the flames of hell and things like that. But he heaven is the direct opposite. You're in complete, as much pleasure. You're in so much more pleasure in heaven than they are in torments in hell. It's hard to imagine that. Even though you can't see beyond the flesh, you have to have faith. Second Corinthians 5, 8 says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present from the Lord. If you have believing that goes beyond seeing, then you believe you have a home in heaven with the Lord and that to be absent from this body, meaning when you die and your soul leaves the body, when your soul is in departing, as the Bible calls it, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 
And if you have believing that goes beyond seeing, then you believe you have a home in heaven with the Lord when you die. Now verse 9, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. We labor not to get saved or stay saved, but because we want to be pleasing in his sight. You want the things you do to be acceptable in the eyes of God. And that's why Titus 3.14 says, And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. So you need to labor in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Isaiah 55.11 So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. That's saying it will not return void. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You may think that what you're doing is all in vain. But if you're doing something for God, it's never in vain. And it takes faith to believe that sometimes. And the next thing, believe everything you do matters even if you don't see evidence of it. If you have believing that goes beyond seeing, believe everything that you do matters even if you don't see evidence of it. Even though you may not see the results of your labor right off or even in this life, you need to believe it all matters in eternity. That is believing that goes beyond seeing. It matters because one day... As 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that, to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So believe everything you do matters, even if you don't see evidence of it. Yet, one day you're going to, because one day everyone may receive the things done in his body According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, everything you do in this body matters. We are all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14.10 says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And 1 Corinthians 3.11-15 through 15 goes on to explain this even further, where it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon his foundation, upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Was it a good, did you have a good motive or a bad motive in these good things that you're doing? And if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. If your works were good works for the right motive, then they will make it through the fire as gold, silver, precious stones. If they're bad works or good, or good works with the wrong motive, then they'll come through the fire as wood, hay, and stubble and just go up and smoke. You're not judged for your sins at the judgment seat of Christ. Your sins have already been judged on the cross. If you're saved, Jesus already took the paid the payment for those things. But at the judgment seat of Christ, you're judged for your service. Were those works good works with the right motive? Every second that goes by matters. What are you doing with your time? Believing everything you do matters, even if you don't see evidence of it, requires Believing that goes beyond seeing. Every second that goes by matters. Every second. You can't get it back. All these seconds going by and you're not doing anything for the Lord. You haven't done anything for the Lord in years. And the seconds are just ticking by. You're going to wake up 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old. And if you're lucky, 80 years old. You know, and you may never have done nothing from the, for the Lord. Do today what you'll wish you did when you were 80. I want to read the Bible. I want to study the Bible. I don't want to wake up and be 50 years old and not know anything or have any wisdom 
to give somebody because I wasted all of my time watching sports, worried about work, you know, anything but the Bible, anything but the Lord. That's what people do and they wake up, they're 54 years old. They have no advice to give me. Being old enough to be my father, all these men, they have no advice to give me. They wasted all their time. And the, the advice that they do give is completely unbiblical advice. Like, put yourself first. Look out for old number one first. Make yourself happy. All of this very, very unbiblical advice that people give that are up in age. Or even if you just watch the the news, you see these older, much older men, uh, even the presidential candidates, Joe Biden, 78 years old, has no wisdom whatsoever. What's he done with his time? I mean, where, where's their knowledge? I mean, I like Trump. That's who I, I would vote for. But he held up an English Standard Version, not the King James I found out about the Bible version issue when I first got saved at the age of 21. Someone that had no interest in the Bible whatsoever, I got saved, and within a week, found out about the King James Bible. I was someone that was listening to heavy metal music and, and cussing and just living for the flesh completely. And uh, I, I found out about the Bible version issue. What, uh, what are you doing with your time? How have you lived 70 years old and you don't even know about the Bible version issue. Uh, his, his spiritual advisors are complete idiots. Paula White, really? Is your spiritual advisor? You're old enough to be her father. You ought to know way more Bible than her. Uh, I think uh, men should know way more Bible than women. I, I think that's their, that should be their responsibility. Because they're supposed to be the head of the house... They should know more Bible, but what do you see? You see all these women, they're the ones that go to church. The women are the ones that lead the, the houses spiritually because they're the ones telling their kids Bible stories and telling them how, how the Bible says to live and all these things. And then the men are just lazy, they're selfish, they're fleshy, they live for the flesh. They're wasting all their time. Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. What are you doing with your time? Are you spending all your time on video games as a grown man? Come on. Are you spending all your time on these video games? Wasting hours upon hours upon hours. Are you spending all your time on Netflix? Are you spending all your time on the golf course and hunting and fishing? The Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. You need to start using your time wisely. If you want rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, then quit using your time for yourself. Use your time for the Lord and for other people's. Don't put yourself first. Don't make sure that you are happy because no one else will. And all these little cute sayings that people say that are very stupid and unbiblical. Read your Bible. Pray. Give. Get some type of ministry for for the Lord. If you do these things for the Lord and not for yourself, then those works will make it through the fire. And if you have believing that goes beyond seeing, then you realize that everything you do matters, even if you don't see the evidence of it. And Matthew 6, 5 says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Fairly I say unto you, they have their reward. Do you do the things you do for you or to be seen of men and to get recognition? Or do you do these things because you love God? You love the Bible. You want to please God. That's your motive. Is your motive right? The Lord's going to try every man's work of what sort it is. But this has been part one of 2 Corinthians 5 about believing that goes beyond seeing.